So we're starting chapter four, lecture one, and this deals with the atom. So here's a little bit of history. I think it's kind of interesting to read it, uh, but we're not going to hold you responsible for much of the history of the atom. John Dalton came up with the theory of the atom uh, over 200 years ago. And here we see some characteristics of what he thought an atom was. Uh, some of them are still true today, and some of them have been disproven. For example, disproven, we know now that an atom is broken up into protons, neutrons, and electrons. One of the things that got him to realize the existence of atoms was the conservation of mass. Uh, the result of the separation or recombination of atoms, and then that stated as atoms cannot be created, destroyed, or divided. So in simplest terms, if we have element A and element B, they will combine to form a compound where all of A and all of B will be used up. Atoms are the smallest particle of an element, and they are unbelievably small. So a typical penny contains 29,000 billion billion atoms. And I don't think we can even imagine what that means. When scientists were convinced that there were atoms, then the search was on for discovering were there even smaller particles, subatomic particles, below the atom. And uh, again, it's interesting reading. But for the electron, we just need to know that they are a stream of negative charged particles. And that the rays that went through a cathode ray tube, which is just an old picture tube, are now considered to be electrons. But once electrons were discovered, was the rest of the atom composed of. So there was a quick explanation called the plum pudding model, and just that the electrons were negative charges within a cloud of positive charge. But the cloud didn't really have any kind of a substance to it. From this, we evolved into the Rutherford model. And this was based on an experiment he did where he shot positive charged alpha particles into a gold foil, a thin sheet of gold foil. And what he noticed was that most of the particles, alpha particles, passed straight through but some were deflected off at an angle. And from this, he then modified the plum pudding model into the Rutherford model. The way Rutherford explained his experiment was that alpha particles would pass straight through most of the time, but occasionally, there was a deflection where the alpha particle bounced off of something extremely heavy and dense, relatively dense. In the Rutherford model, an atom consists of empty space through which the electrons move. Almost all of the mass is contained inside the nucleus, which is a tiny dense region of positive charge. You have to know this. You have to know what a nucleus is. How dense is it? Well, 
If a nucleus was the size of the period at the end of the sentence, it would weigh 120 tons. If the nucleus was the size of a nickel, the atom to go out from the nucleus to find the electrons would have a diameter of about two football fields. So it's a dense, tiny region of positive charge. By 1920, he concluded that positive charged particles in the nucleus were called protons. And in 1932, one of Rutherford's co-workers found another particle within the nucleus called a neutron. So to complete our model of the atom, we have protons and neutrons, which are found inside the nucleus. We have electrons, which are located outside of the nucleus. We have our symbols for each, relative charges. The proton is positive charged, an electron is negative charge, and a neutron has no charge. We have our relative masses, a neutron and a proton are one, whereas an electron has essentially no mass, at least compared to the other two. So diagrammatically, we have protons and neutrons located within the nucleus, and somewhere around the nucleus is the region where electrons are found. So that pretty much covers this lesson. We will uh, see you tomorrow in class.